Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS Adam programming. In this video, we will see an example of data imputation in Adam BDS datasets. So we will see an example where we will be using LOCF, which is last observation carried forward, where in the data we have the record present, but result is missing. So we will be using analysis visits as an example, and we'll see an example in which we will be imputing only the value for single parameter. So let us now move to the description. So let us assume that the blood pressure was supposed to be collected at each visit from weeks one to five. So for some reason, week three and week five results are not collected. For analysis purposes, we may be asked to use the last available result before a missing result instead of the missing result at that visit. So we call this as last observation carried forward. So here on the table here. So I am assuming that these are all the records of the same subject for systolic blood pressure. It was supposed to be collected at all weeks from week one to week five. But for some reason at week three, the value is not reported and same is the case with week five. So in these cases, so in some of the cases where we may be asked to use the last known result before this missing result as the analysis, as the analysis value at that visit as well. So similarly, uh, so for example, here, if week three is missing, so if week two is not missing, we may be asked to use the value from week two for week three for analysis purposes. So similarly for week five, as the value is missing, the last available value before week five is from week four. So we may be asked to use the value from week five for analysis. So here on the right hand side, if you see this green light greener color is representing the value at week two. So in order to populate the missing value at week three, what do we need to do is we need to retain this week two's value onto the record of week three as well. And after that, we will be able to use this value and populate the week three result value. So we will see how this can be done programmatically. So, but technically the concept lies here. So here, Again, week four has this result represented. So in order to populate the week five result with the same value, what do we need to do is we need to retain it onto the same uh, on the week five record and then fill in the missing value from the value retained from week four in at week five. So what do we learn in this lesson? So we will see how to populate the missing result on a record with the last available result value prior to that missing value. So let us now move to the specification. So the specification is very simple here. So we have been given the derivation logic for eval and then d-type. So for eval it says on the records where eval is missing, retain the value from last available result before the time point where result is missing within a subject and parameter. And for d-type it says set to LOCF on the record where eval is imputed. So in the example which we have seen, so there were two records for uh, with missing results. So if we are imputing the result here on this record, so we were we are being asked to populate as LOCF on this record. Similarly, if week five is missing, and if we are populating the result here on week five from the previous available visit on that record, we'll have to populate as LOCF. So now let's move to the programming. So we will be using this vital science data set as example in which we have data for two subjects, 1001 and 1002, and the data is for systolic blood pressure. For the sake of simplicity for explaining the concept, I am keeping only one parameter for two subjects. And here, if we see, the data is collected across five visits for these two subjects. And if we notice, there are records with missing values. Say for first subject at week three, it, four miss, it is missing and also at week four, it is missing. And for subject 1002, if we see at week one itself, the value is missing. And again, it is missing at week three and also missing at week five. So we will now see how to replace the missing values based on the last available non-missing result at that visit. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my vital signs data set as input and sorting the records and storing them in VS01. How am I sorting? I am bringing all the records of a subject together and within the subject, all the records of a parameter together. And then within the parameter, I am sorting the records by ascending a visitant. So which means, so 
uh, a visitant will have a chronological sequence which means one comes before two and two comes before three so so that these are the last available result prior to a current current visit will be above that record and then if there exist multiple records i am giving preference for date in ascending manner and then in the next step what i am doing here is sorting uh, use, creating a data set called vs02 using vs01 i am indicating to my data step that my records are sorted based on use of jd paramen a visitant and adt so when i specify these variables on the by statement it automatically creates two temporary variables for each of the variables specified on the by statement they will be first dot variable and last dot variable for each of the variables so in order to show you what is happening uh, on the eval imputation so i am temporarily creating a variable called original underscore eval to store the unchanged value of eval so now i am creating a temporary variable called temp eval and then i am specifying it on the retain statement so we as we are familiar with sas so what happens between observations is that any newly created variable would be uh, set to null before a observation is created in the pdv so when we specify the variable on the retain statement that setting to missing will not happen on those variables whichever is specified on the retain statement so we'll be making use of that logic to retain the value from previous visit to the record on which the result is missing so here what i'm doing here is if, if first dot paramen then call missing of temp eval so whatever i here if you see there is a record for subject one double zero two at week one the result is missing so this is the very first record for the subject but we should not retain the value from a previous subject onto the current subject the imputation should happen only within subject so what i am doing here is within the subject and parameter i am setting that temporary variable to missing so that no carrying forward will happen from one subject or one parameter to another parameter within a subject and then next lies our key statement which says if not missing of eval then temp eval is equal to eval so i will go to the data set vs02 and show you what will happen in this temp eval and how the values would look like in temp eval so i will go to vs02 so let's take a look at the values in temp eval so here temp eval if not missing of eval then i am assigning the value from eval to the temp eval so here it is not missing so 140 is assigned to the temp eval and on the second record so 153 is not missing so uh, eval value is 153 which is not missing so that value would be assigned to 153 so if we had not specified temp eval on the retain statement what would have happened here is so the value in temp eval would have been set to the missing value before this third observation is processed but as we have specified the temp eval on the retain statement this value is actually retained from the previous value onto this record so if not missing of eval on then temp eval is equal to eval so here in this case the values from previous observation is retained but this statement is not executed if not missing of eval so on this record if we see so here it is a processed one let us take a look at the original eval value so here in the, before we are actually imputing the value with temp eval here so we are seeing that end result in eval variable so but this unmodified eval is present in this original eval so if we see uh, the original eval value was missing on that record but this previous value was retained because uh, we have specified temp eval on the retain statement so this statement this then statement was not executed at all for this observation but as we specify temp eval on the retain statement the previous value was retained onto the current record so this is the key logic on uh, so that we will be able to use this retained value into the missing value record similarly what is happening on the next observation also this previous non missing value 153 is retained here so and similarly it is happening in other places as well so if we see for second subject for first record itself the value is missing so we have not ensure we have ensured that this 142 from the previous subject and parameter is not carried forward onto the temp eval of 
this subject and parameter by making sure that on every first record of the parameter we are setting that to null here so this has become null and there is no carry forward effect from the previous subject and parameter so and then what if we are doing here in the next step is if eval is missing and then temp eval not is equal to missing then do eval is equal to so whatever we have retained from the previous is being assigned back to the eval variable so here original eval was missing so what were we doing so if eval is missing then we were pulling in the value from this temp eval and populating the eval value so this missing value original missing value in eval variable is now replaced with the retained 153 from the previous record and the same thing is happening here on the next record at week 4 as well the original result was missing but the retained non missing value from a previous visit where the re result was available is replaced in the eval variable and then similarly if we take a look at the case here so at week 2 we have a result but week 3 it was missing so week 2 the non missing result was 140 so we should technically get it back onto the record of week 3 as well similarly if we see the original eval is 130 and original eval value was missing on week 5 so if we were asked to use the value present in 130 and populate here on the week 5 record as well which is what we are doing here so this is how locf logic can be applied to retain the last available result prior to missing value onto that record so and then we were asked to set the d type to locf on the records where eval is imputed so here if you see LOCF is coming, which indicates that this result on this record is imputed with the logic of last observation being carried forward. It was not only one particular visit, so we had two consecutive visits missing, but for both of them, the last available record was from the week two, which is the result was 153. So we are using same 153 on week three and week four as well. So here, there is no available record. prior to this week 1 for this subject and parameter so we will not be able to impute as this is the very first record because the definition itself said use the last available result prior to that visit as this is the first visit there is no prior record so we will have to leave this value as null and then imputation is happening in other places as well so let us take a look at the final data set Wherein I think this should look very similar to the one which we have. So I have dropped the temp eval and other temporary variables which I have created. But for the reviewers, they will know that the value in eval variable is imputed by taking a look at the d type variable. So it indicates that the derivation was based on LOCF. So and if we can also visually cross verify if the result is actually coming from the previous result with the non missing value. so it is this is how you can program locf logic when you have the record present but the result is missing so there will be other cases wherein the records would be missing altogether in those cases we will create a template of visits first and then merge it with the template we merge the actual data with the template and then we will know which visits were missing and then we will impute the with the same logic so prior to this there will be two steps creating a template first and then merging the actual data with the template and then creating the locf records thank you for watching and keep learning